So I'm I'm kind of getting off script here, um, and I want to get to some of these other questions, but you've really piqued my curiosity. So I, you know, you you watch these scientific documentaries that try to explain stuff to laymen, and so they say that if you and this isn't really young Earth creationist, but I've got astrophysicists on, so I really just want to ask the question. So um, I think I read in one of Stephen Hawking's books that if you had two uh, twins that were born on Earth, you set one out in a rocket ship, you know, and the guy on Earth keeps aging while the guy in the rocket ship hardly ages at all. He comes back to Earth and he's basically still an infant and the other guy's, you know, about to die because he's so old. Uh, what, what's your view on that? I'll just ask you that. That's correct. And that, that follows logically from the physics that Einstein discovered. And it's something, I've actually written a book on the physics of Einstein called The Physics of Einstein, because I'm not very creative, apparently. But <laughs> um, it goes through things like that. And you can actually demonstrate that that has to happen. What, the beautiful thing about the physics of Einstein, it's not like other branches of science. Most other branches of science, we make observations and we, we make inferences about that. We make guesses and we, we write down equations that, that we think describe and then we try to test that. The physics of Einstein is a little different in that it's only based on two observations. And from that, the rest of it, you can derive logically, mathematically. You can prove that it's true based on only two um, observations, the constancy of the round trip speed of light and the relativity principle, which is that the physics physics works the same way regardless of your velocity. But yeah, that what you just mentioned is called the twin paradox. And it turns out that, that yeah, if you have two twins and one travels at a high speed or say a distant star and then and, and turns around and comes back, the twin that traveled will have aged much less than, than his counterpart on the Earth in an equal amount of time. And from his point of view, from from the moving twin's point of view, the, the trip that genuinely didn't take very long. He's, he would be surprised to see his twin on Earth have, having aged so much because he only experienced a very short amount of time. From his perspective, the universe would, would shrink in the direction of motion as he increases his speed. That's called length contraction. But from his twin's perspective back on Earth, the, the twin that's moving, his clocks would be slowed down. Everything would be slowed down together, though, so he wouldn't notice. His brain would be slowed down at the same rate as his watch, so he wouldn't notice any difference. Everything's proportional. So he would see he would seem to be aging very slowly. And then when he turns around and comes, and comes back, uh, his twin on Earth would have aged many years, whereas the twin who moves uh, ages very little. So now, if you're thinking, well, I, you know, I need to drive really fast then because I won't age as much, you have to get really close to the speed of light for this to be an effect. So, and that's the reason it's counterintuitive. We just don't experience that on Earth because we travel so slowly compared to the speed of light. Speed, speed of light, it can go around Earth seven times in one second. We don't get anywhere close to that. And so the, the, yes, technically you're aging a little bit less when you're moving along the road than when you're stationary, but it's a tiny amount. Uh, you have to get up to 14% speed of light to have a 1% uh, clocks slow down by 1%. So it's a tiny effect, but theoretically, if you were to move close to the speed of light, um, we would notice this. And, and we have noticed this. We can get particles uh, in particle accelerators to get very close to the speed of light, and some of these particles decay. They, they, they change into an, another particle in a certain amount of time. It's like they have an onboard clock. And sure enough, the faster they go, their, their onboard clock slows down, and they live a lot longer than you would expect precisely in the way that Einstein calculated and in my book on this topic, I show people how you can calculate that and I even get the graph and stuff. So it's, it's, it's neat. And it's, it's one of those things where true 